Whoa, what is this? What is this guy's mustache? I don't know. None of your business. <laughs> How's it going, everybody? Obviously, the Spider-Man video is here. I've seen Spider-Man, and just a heads up, there's spoilers all over this video, okay? Spoilers all over this bit. So just letting you know, if you haven't seen the movie, I recommend you don't watch this video, but after you watch the movie, come back to watch this video. Also, I forgot to say that most of the spoilers that you saw on the internet are actually spoilers, and they're not Photoshop. And it makes me wonder, how do things like this even get leaked? How do scenes from the set get leaked like that? How do they do it? Do they, like tease it or something I, I don't how do things like that get leaked i don't know and it was really funny looking back at all of the press that andrew toby and tom did for the no way home movie and they were denying being in the movies for like four minutes straight and it was so funny looking back at it now because like they're really good actors they're really good <laughs> for example the part with andrew having his hand on the pole right like i like i was talking about yeah, it's real. <laughs> and uh, he said, so do you get web block? Not web blood. And it was really funny. And he was actually talking to Toby. This is a very good and in-depth review without a script of the Spider-Man No Way Home movie by yours truly. I hope that you enjoy this video and I hope that you enjoyed the movie. Now, also another heads up, I haven't read any of the Spider-Man comics, so I'm like not that kind of a Spider-Man fan, but I am just enough of a Spider-Man fan to talk about it for hours and annoy the fuck out of it. Let me just start by saying my reviews of the old movies, right? Let's start with the Spider-Man in the 1900s, okay? <laughs> I'm joking. With the live action old Spider-Man movies I've watched a little bit of, it's nothing like, you know, that really connected with me, but I'm sure that there are a lot of people who really connect with those. And I see a lot of people making Spider-Man videos, but nobody's talking about those old video, about those old movies. So, um, yeah, I just thought I would mention it at least a little bit because that Spider-Man deserves a little bit of credit, I guess, you know, but, um, I don't know if they're really loved or really hated. I just thought I would mention it. Just know that there's three or two, actually, I think maybe three old Spider-Man movies from the 1900s. There's a Spider-Man before Tobey Maguire. So just to let you know, Tobey Maguire movies, I am so like, <laughs> spiritually, emotionally, and mentally connected with these movies and with Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man, Peter Parker, because I grew up with them essentially, right? I'm 20 years old. I grew up with that Spider-Man, right? And uh, once I found out that there's not going to be a Spider-Man 4, 5, and 6, my heart was shattered. I was heartbroken. And um, I really wanted it to happen, but, you know, they didn't. Right. Fast forward a few years in 2012 and 14, Andrew Garfield, Peter Parker, Spider-Man. Uh, I was really excited when I saw the first trailer. I was like, what is this? I don't remember what movie I was seeing, but I, I went to the movies with my mom and we saw a movie. And in the previews, we saw we saw these characters. And then all of a sudden he was wearing a Spider-Man suit. And I was freaking my mind was blown. OK, you have no idea. but My mind was blown. And when I saw I was the lizard, I was like, what? They need to have like Venom or something, right? They need to come back with Venom because, you know, I really like Venom. Even though they had it in Spider-Man 3, I wanted it to happen again. And I, I didn't know what I wanted, but I was confused as to why, like, how movies work is very confusing to me because they can start off, because, because Spider-Man's first villain is Chameleon, right? And it was confusing to me because his first villain in the movies was the Green Goblin and then the Lizard. So I was like, why are they starting with why are they starting with those villains? And I later found out like just don't think about it that much. I th I think about things and then it just kind of spirals out of control and I start thinking about it some more like uh things like that. Cuz in movies not always the first villain that they fight is going to be the best choice, you know what I mean? So Green Goblin, I later found out, like, was very excellently executed. It was very, it was a very good time. Willem Dafoe is a great Green Goblin, and uh, I wouldn't have it any other way. Uh, Tom Holland, he's a great Spider-Man. Uh, Andrew Garfield is underrated, bro. <laughs> and uh, spoiler time, okay? It was funny how in No Way Home, Andrew knew he wasn't the favorite. <laughs> it knew... <laughs> In the movie, he was like, it was funny how he knew he wasn't the shit, you know what I mean? 
<laughs> he knew he wasn't as liked as uh, Toby and Tom. Let's talk about No Way Home. Great movie, in my opinion. I know it's from a few comics, right? I saw a video that it, it is from some of the comics, but it's from like a wide variety of them, kind of. A few things that I really liked about it. Again, this isn't doesn't have a script to it, so bear with me, okay? I'm just gonna ramble and uh, talk about Spider-Man. So if you enjoy, leave a like and subscribe. If if I actually, you know, I'm not gonna tell you to subscribe. I'm, I'm gonna issue you a challenge. If at any point during this video you say, ooh, or whoa, or ah, then you can subscribe. Because if I make you say that, during this video, then I think this is the right place for you because it means you're entertained and you like what you're watching. And if not, then pfft. Oh well, I'll try. There were so many things in this movie. First of all, how about that? Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield being in No Way Home. How about freaking that, dude? When that ha when that happened, through the portal, freaking Ned being a magician and a wizard and shit, he opened that portal, and then we saw Spider-Man. At first I thought it was like, Spider-Man Noir? Huh? But then he got closer, and I saw his his body language, and I was like, oh my god, it's it's actually Andrew. He came through, whipped his mask off, and the whole theater freaking <laughs> we were all like, oh! It was like it was like it was like the people who clap when a plane lands. Don't even get me started when Toby walked in. Everybody freaked out. Everybody freaked out because if we see Andrew, first of all, it was really funny the interactions between everybody like Ned and uh, Zendaya, what, uh, Mary Jane. It it was so funny because like MJ didn't believe it at first, like what? But yeah, and then Toby came in and then everybody freaked out even more because uh, it it was so weird. It was so. Hey Siri, define surreal. Yeah, it was so surreal because seeing Toby and Andrew, there was that one scene where th all three of the Spider-Men, where they're running and then they jump off of the uh, the thingy to go and fight the bad guys. That scene gave me chills. It was so sick. It was so freaking sick because it was like, oh my god, this is actually happening. The whole Spider-Man fans can like finally sleep peacefully at night because they know that this happened. It was so cool, like seeing this, their spiders on their back. It, it was that was like a thing. And when they first all put on their masks uh, at the same time, it was so cool. It was so cool as well because like, like they they had their masks off for a while, right? And and when they finally put on those masks, bro, I was I was like I cried so many times in in that movie theater. There were a few times where I thought that the the movie was moving a bit too fast. And they kind of oversaturated it with, like, funny parts, comedy relief, or, or like, j just to be comical. And they, they kind of overdid it with that part of it. But I think it was pretty pretty balanced. I think they kind of tied it in pretty well with uh, Peter's identity being revealed and him being the most famous person in the world, also most hated. I think they did that really well, and then the transition to making that spell happen and having the whole consequence cycle of that thing happening. Like, just the transition between everybody knowing and then nobody knowing was very well done, I think. I think. It was, it seemed a bit rushed at some points, but um, I think those parts where they were rushed were replaced with a very well thought out and well put comedic part. You know what I mean? So, I think it was, I think it was really well done. There were a few missed opportunities, like me and my cousins have... Uh, been talking about like the uh, spider-man meme where they're pointing at each other I think they do reference that if I'm not mistaken, but they don't do it which they should have I think I think they should have you know what fuck it who cares about the story in that old cartoon? Okay, who cares? I do love the old cartoons though Who cares if it doesn't make sense put the reference in there? They also missed pizza time and bully Maguire. They needed to make references of that Maybe they found out whenever they finished the the movie. They were like, oh damn it. Okay moving on to the connections of uh, No Way Home and the other Spider-Man series. There were plenty. So there there was a lot packed into this movie. It's like two hours, 30 minutes. When I didn't even realize it, the first hour was up. And uh, yeah, it keeps you gripped. And the transition from nobody knowing him to everybody knowing him to nobody knowing him again. And the funny parts in between it and the Spider-Man references to each other. There are the villains from the other movies. There are villains from Spider-Man 1, 2, and uh, 3. And then 
villains from Spider-Man, Amazing Spider-Man 1 and Amazing Spider-Man 2, Tom has his own things to deal with. I think Tom's villain in this movie was pretty much the Earth. <laughs> Everybody knowing him, like that. What it's not a villain, but that's the th that's the antagonist. That's Peter's arc right there. That's what he has to deal with, right? So like everybody, Tom Holland has to deal with his Earth, right, and his dimension, and everybody knowing who he is, as well as all the other Spider Men being there, and also Aunt May dying. So that's Tom has so many hurdles to go over, and he's grown up so much from the first movie uh, and Captain America Civil War and to now he's grown up so much and I bet that after this he grew up even more because he took the inspiration I bet took the inspiration from the other Spider-Men from the other Peters and Parkers and he has a new suit so I think I like to think at least that that represents change and um, new beginnings, I guess, which is really cool. Okay, so a few of the references that I remember. Audible references are, they, they are but not limited to the power of the sun in the palm of my hand. <laughs> it, it, I got chills from hearing Doc Ock saying that. And what else did he say? You're not Peter. Green Goblin, of course, his laugh, everything he says. And also when he put his mask up, his Green Goblin mask up on the dumpster. That was referencing to, what, Spider-Man 1, where he had it on the chair? This is all very well thought out, and it's premeditated as fuck. And just the fact that they got Toby and Andrew, I'm gonna say it again, just the fact that they got Toby and Andrew in on this movie is just mind-blowing enough. And also, I don't remember Lizard being as well, goddammit, talkative, like, it was so well-spoken before. He has an accent. <laughs> He's so... Peter. <laughs> But yeah, dude, it was such a good movie, dude. Also, the black and gold suit was hard. And just that it picks up right, it picks up right where Far From Home ended. Like, right where it ended. Right where it freaking ended, dude. It was so good. I can't believe. Because, like, once it started playing, I was like, dude, I feel like I shouldn't even be seeing this right now. I feel like I shouldn't even be seeing this right now. I felt like, dude, is this, is it ready? I wanted to watch it again. I wanted to watch it again, dude. Man, I, I, if I could go watch it again, I freaking would. And I looked up when the DVD comes out. It's coming out in March. It's like everything, whenever they came back, it's like everything left off where everything ended, like in the other movies. Which, which kind of made me start thinking in the movie theater while everything was happening, which was definitely a sensory overload for ya boy, right? If none of the movies got thrown away in the bin, Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man continued for its six movies that it was planned for, and The Amazing Spider-Man uh, continued for the four movies that it was planned for. I saw something about there being Amazing Spider-Man 6, but I don't think that is a thing. I swear to God. Oh my God. Can someone tell me? There was supposed to be, there was like a Sinister Six trailer, right? Somewhere on YouTube. I swear. I swear there was a trailer of some sort. Or like there was like an official announcement or something for the Sinister Six. They were supposed to have Amazing Spider-Man 1, 2, I think 3, then Sinister Six, and then Venom, and then Amazing Spider-Man 4. And then that was going to be the end, right? So I think Spider-Man, Amazing Spider-Man 4 would be, would have been about Venom and Carnage and number three would be Sinister Six, right? I think that's how it would have happened. I also saw another video about in Amazing Spider-Man 3 there being Agent Venom, which would be cool, right? And then Amazing Spider-Man 4 would continue and be about Venom, but how would they tie in Sinister Six in there? Would that be like the Suicide Squad, like its own movie, like they're doing with Venom? The possibilities of Venom and Spider-Man crossing over is making me happy. They are making me happy. Uh, the post credit scene where there were some of the symbiote on the counter, which I'm kind of confused about. I didn't watch any videos on that explaining it, or maybe I did, but I was just eating and I wasn't paying attention. It was just like, it ended up being just background noise and I just didn't understand. But my cousin and I theorized that it's gonna be like Spider-Man 3, the, the black symbiote suit for the next trilogy of Tom Holland Spider-Man movies, right? I'm just happy that they're all tying in together again, right? As I was saying as well, if uh, Spider-Man continued with num with six, right? Uh, where would Black Cat tie in here? Where would where would the Gwens tie in here, right? Like I think that since since No Way Home ended the way it did, and uh, MJ and Ned not knowing who they first of all, I thought that they were together. You know what I'm talking about? Whenever they whenever Peter walked in to the store that MJ was, you know, I thought Ned and MJ <laughs> were together. Anyway, I think this is where Gwen comes in. In the next trilogy, this is where Gwen has to come in. Gwen has to come in. 
because MJ doesn't know him. And then I guess once once Gwen doesn't work out, then he'll go back to MJ. I have no clue about that, but I think I I my prediction is that Gwen is going to be somewhere in the next trilogy. She has to be. And so is Oscorp, right? It surprises me how they went three movies without <laughs> there being an Oscorp or like Harry Osborn or Norman Osborn, which is kind of weird. Like I said, I already that's repetitive, god damn it. But yeah, as I was freaking saying, god damn it. If there continue to be Spider-Man 6 and Amazing Spider-Man 4, then, I mean, there would have already been the Sinister 6. That's what they were trying to do. Then it failed, and then they were trying to do, do Sinister 6 again in Amazing Spider-Man, right? Then that failed. Or did it? Well, if they failed, it worked out, right? It worked out graciously because they're all together now, and they're doing a different story on a bigger scale now that I guess the other movies failed to their advantage, which is kind of a weird oxymoron. If they didn't fail, though, what would what would I be talking about today? You know what I mean? What would I be talking about today? Because there were in Spider-Man 4 with Toby, it was said that Spider-Man 4 was going to be about Vulture. Spider-Man 5 would be Lizard and 6 would be Sinister 6. OK, and then 3, Amazing Spider-Man 3, I don't even know. I, I got mixed up. It would be about Venom and Sinister 6. That's either one of them. I don't know which one. Yeah. And then there was supposed to be a solo movie. Movie with Venom, which is happening right now, which makes me think, is the Sinister Six movie going to be happening during the next trilogy? Are they? Did they not give up on it? I thought they threw that away. I thought they forgot about Sinister Six. Where is all that going to tie in? I, I'm thinking it's not. I, 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 I think it's going to be happening because Venom is happening right now, which I thought Sinister Six would be happening first, but I don't know why. I kind of forgot about that, I guess. It's just a few memories in my brain that kind of got thrown away or something. I have no clue what happened there, but it's, it's happening. It's happening. They're on a second one. And uh, it seems like, yeah, the post credit scene was freaking dope. It was freaking dope. Never leave the movie theater after a Marvel movie ends, right? I, I don't understand. Some people might not even... Shut up, clock. Everybody, like, there's so many people that leave once when the credits start. There's always something after the credit. There's always something after the credits. And I bet you that some people don't even know that still. <laughs> they don't even know, bro. They just, they just leave right when the movie ends bro god damn it it's like you're eating bread what else was i gonna say yeah i think sinister six is gonna happen it's got to also shout out to doc ock uh in no way home i don't think they would have been able to pull off what they were doing if it wasn't for him i mean did this movie count as sinister six i don't think so they didn't have craven or vulture not craven yeah they didn't even have craven either craven the hunter craven is in the sinister six isn't he god damn so sinister six didn't even happen yet so how does it happen venom and then sinister six is that what happens because in toby's universe venom happened and they were trying to set up for sinister six right uh so is that what's gonna be going on here is that what's happening here i don't know the thing that confuses me kind of the most is their choice in villains and in the timeline tom's spider-man didn't have an origin story toby's and andrew's did and we didn't see uncle ben die right there may have been flashbacks actually no i don't i don't think so i don't think they said anything about it it was just him he started off as spider-man right away i think that's it i think that's all for me i have a few videos to edit but if you guys said like ooh or ah or like some kind of noise in agreement, then hit the subscribe button Please. I live stream co quite frequently. I upload every now and then, but there's a big special thing that's happening soon. Hopefully next year, around mid next year or something like that. Stick around. <laughs> no pun intended. I know you'll enjoy it because if you enjoy me, then you'll enjoy the content that I have in the works. It makes me nervous thinking about it. All right, guys. I love you guys. Bye-bye.